Yesterday, independent presidential candidate RFK Jr. announced his choice for VP running mate. 38 year old Nicole Shanahan, self described progressive through and through. Well, then why isn't she running as a Democrat? Same reason Kennedy isn't. They wouldn't let him into the primary process. She came uh, from being the daughter of a poor Chinese immigrant mother uh, to a millionaire tech entrepreneur. Here are the highlights from the announcement. Well, I'm proud to introduce to all of you the next vice president of the United States of America, Nicole Shanahan. Thank you all very much. Every time my dad lost his job, our family just couldn't cover expenses. Food, gas, clothing, upkeep. I don't think we would have made it without food stamps and government help. As you probably know, I became very wealthy later on in life, but my roots in Oakland taught me many things I have never forgotten. That the purpose of wealth is to help those in need. So I come to you today as a former Democrat. I come to you as a woman not quite 40. I come to you as someone who has experienced sickness and health and poverty and wealth. And I finally, I come to you as a mother. If you are one of those disillusioned Republicans, I welcome you to join me, a disillusioned Democrat. In this movement to unify and heal America. Gotta tell you, I thought that that was well delivered, okay? Now, how did it play? Mm, depends who you ask. All right, let's bring in Robert F. Kennedy Jr. right now. Uh, thank you very much, Bobby, for joining us. It's good to have you. Chris, great to be back with you. I want to uh, get through some big points so we can get to the people's questions for you. Uh, look, the knock on Shanahan is easy, that she's not ready to be VP. You're young. Uh, we don't have, the, there are no questions like with Trump and Biden in terms of, well, what happens if Bobby gets sick? Um, how do you respond to the idea that uh, Shanahan checks a lot of boxes, but none that would make her able to run the country? I, I would say a couple things, Chris. One is that I'm guessing she probably has a higher IQ than almost anybody who I've seen in public life today. She's an expert on AI, which we need in the government right now. She's an expert on chronic disease, which is probably arguably our biggest issue in this country. We've gone from 6% of people having chronic disease when my uncle was president to 60% today. We've got an entire generation disabled by neurological injuries, autoimmune injuries, allergic injuries. Um, and we have nobody talking about it. We're, we're paying more now, Chris, for diabetes than for our defense budget. So mm -hmm. when I was a kid, um, a typical pediatrician would see one case of juvenile diabetes in his lifetime. Today, one out of every three kids who walks into his office has juvenile diabetes. Agreed. And nobody's talking about it. Nobody is talking about it. And it is costing us $4.3 trillion a year. Three times our defense budget. What you know? The, every people said to me, "Well, you should have brought an insider in as VP." No, the insider is the one who gave us the chronic disease epidemic. They gave us the thirty-four trillion dollar debt. President Bush, President Biden, and President Trump, during their short times in office, a single term each, together, drove up a, a larger debt than every president since George Washington combined. So the, and the Congress let them do it. So it's not somebody inside who's going to solve the problem. They're the ones who gave us the problem. We need somebody who can think about it in a different way. Accepted uh, with a comma that, you know, the, the pandemic uh, boosted a lot of the spending needs. Uh, but that said, I look forward to having Shanahan no, on. It's an open but invitation. They need, but, but, but they didn't need to do that. I mean, President Trump came in and said, I'm going to run the country like a business. And then... He shut down 3.3 million businesses. What businessman would do that? He handed the keys to every one of our businesses in this country but, to but Bobby, Kathy Fauci. But Bobby, and oh, I'm, sure, I'm sure this is yeah. going to go viral because I'm about to defend Trump. When everybody <laughs> comes to you, if it's President Kennedy, and says, we need to do this right now. This is not going to last a week or two weeks. Uh, this is a real problem. We're going to be overwhelmed. There's only one place that makes the swabs that we need. Uh, that's what pushed Trump into that situation. And then 
you had the businesses closed, you had all these people out of work, you had all these other problems, they started spending money. Biden continued to spend the money. Here, Trump wanted to spend thing, even Chris, more. You got to give him a little bit of a break on that. The pandemic was a problem. Here's, here's the thing, Chris. If I were president, that would have never happened. Never, ever. When my uncle was president, when John Kennedy was president, he was, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, when the whole world was on the edge of a nuclear war, he had 11 of the 13 top advisors, what they call the XCOM committee, telling him he needed to invade Cuba. If he had gone ahead and done that, it would have been the end of the world. We now know. So, and he said, no, I, he researched the issue himself. He said, show me the aerial photos. He asked the CIA, what is Khrushchev going to do? Isn't it going to make, if we go in and kill his gun crews in Cuba, isn't he going to have to come into Germany and isn't that going to end up in a nuclear war? He has the questions. He went granular. He did the details and he figured out a different solution. And we need that kind of president today and we needed it during the pandemic. And unfortunately, we got two presidents who made a series of bad choices, drove up a, a $16 trillion in costs, destroyed an entire generation of kids and their learning, did things that nobody in their right mind would have done during a pandemic that violated every pandemic protocol that we've developed over 50 years. You do not shut down a country for a respiratory illness because everybody knows it's going to go through anyway, and it was an illness that spread indoors not outdoors, and we knew that from the beginning. Right, but they were trying but to we keep bad, people from being leadership. in collections. Because remember, the people who made the protocols were also the ones telling the presidents to go this route, and it was echoed um, in many places all over the world. But I get the discrepancy they, on it. I they, get the they discrepancy. Were violating, they, were violating, they were violating their own protocols, and yes. nobody asked. Nobody, you, you had people telling us, trust the experts. And of course, that, that is not a feature of, that's not a thing. Trust the experts is not a feature of science. It's not a feature of democracy. It is a feature of religion and totalitarianism. But in democracies, we don't do that. We question everybody, and we need a president who knows that. Let me ask you one more quick thing. Um, and I'm going to make it a little protracted, but you, you, you'll, you'll get it. The Libertarian Party is interested in you. They have some questions about Shanahan. You, you'll have to meet with them. Do you have to make that work to get on enough state ballots to be viable to win? And if you cannot get on enough state ballots to be viable to win, will that be the demarcation line for you in terms of whether you decide to stay in the race or not? You know, Chris, people have been asking me this from the beginning. I get this question. And I know you don't follow the crowd on anything, but I do get this question from every reporter, you know, what are you going to do if you don't get on the ballot? And I say the same thing every time. I say, we're going to be on the ballot in every state, all 50 states and the District of Columbia. I'm not saying that to spin something or to, you know, feed you a line. I'm saying it because it's going to happen, and it's going to happen very, very quickly. So just, you know... Uh, give us about eight weeks. I'm and, giving it to you. Know, you. I'm just I'm asking it conditionally, <laughs> just with where the map is right yeah, now. No, and with not, the Libertarian ticket, do you need them? Do you need to run on their line? No. No, no. no. I, you know, I'm very aligned with, with Libertarians on a lot of issues. I love Libertarians. I love the way they think about liberty. I think it's really critical and important. And I think on... 80% of the of the issues I'm I'm aligned with 80% of libertarians but I, and so I I do like the idea of running on their on their line and we've talked about it and toyed with it and talked to them about it but uh, we don't need to do that we're not going right. to need any political party we we're, right. we're going to make it on on our right. own I mean look the distinction is you keep getting asked the question because the democrats want you out you know, <laughs> now you have the DNC uh, that have uh, actively have a team set up to figure out how to deal with you and other third party candidates that's not where I'm coming from I'm just trying to figure out the pragmatism for you all right the people matter more they have calls for you who do we have for bobby Okay, we have a lot of people for Mr. Kennedy. Um, we're going to start with Joe from Brookings, Oregon. Joe, what's your question? Keep it tight. Yes, uh, would Mr. Kennedy uh, be willing to do a one-on-one -on -one debate with Donald Trump? Since we know Joe Biden's too senile oh, to I do would, it himself. I, I would love nothing more than that. I, you know, I, I would be great to have a three-person debate. 
but I will debate uh, either President Biden or President Trump in any kind of forum that they want. Good luck with that. Though I don't even think they're going to debate each other, <laughs> uh, to be honest. All right, next question, next question. Okay, next we're going to go to Mark from Virginia. Mark, what's your question? Good afternoon, Mr. Kennedy. It, it's an honor to speak with you. My question is, we all know that the DNC has engaged in a massive misinformation campaign. Uh, to malign and marginalize you. It's been picked up by a lot of the mass media. It's only going to get worse. What specifically is your plan to combat that other than continuing to hold rally? Well, you know, now I'm, I'm able to go on uh, some of the media outlets. I mean, Chris has been one of the first people to actually let me on and have a conversation to do a live to build a live the, the live uh, conversation. None of the mainstream media will let that happen. None of the other um, MSNBC will not let me have this kind of discussion on air. CNN won't. NBC, ABC, none of them will. Uh, some of them are starting to, and you know, Michael Schmirkanish let me on a live show recently. Um, Chris lets me on uh, this network, New News Nation. There's a number of of uh, hosts on these shows that are letting me on, and their range, you know, people understand. CNN has an agenda. MSNBC has an agenda. Fox News has an agenda, but. Um, News Nation is plays it pretty much straight up and down the line, and I think the appetite for that among the American people is greater and greater, and I'm getting bigger audiences. So, what you know, I reach a lot of people through podcasts. That's why I'm doing better in this country than either President Biden or President Trump. I, under Americans under 45, I beat them. The people where I'm weakest are the baby boomers. So, and baby boomers who I should be doing the best with because they remember Camelot, they were around for the Kennedy era, and they loved me when I was the environmental champion. But they don't like me now because those, you know, those information ecosystems are very uh, uh, defamatory toward me, as you pointed out. So really, I think our big challenge is I'm, I'm winning among independents, which is now the biggest political party. I'm winning among young people. I'm tied, uh, three-way tie among Hispanic voters. I'm doing very well among black voters. My big challenge is reaching those baby boomers. And I think what we're going to see is that what, what we find is when the, when baby boomers hear me actually speak, when they listen to a podcast, we have a very, very high conversion rate very quickly. Oh, I think um, if if I can get on there, I think my polling numbers keep up. It's going to be very hard for them to keep me off, and um, we'll see what happens. Let's get one more question from Bobby. Who do you have, Dustin? Oh, yeah. We have uh, Ron from New York. Ron, what's your question? Yes, Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy, who's wrong in the termination of Ron McDonald with MSNBC with a hire and then fired subsequently in the first week? Who, who do you place the onus on, Mr. Kennedy? You know, I, I wish I could help you with that. I really don't know. I don't know who runs that network. Um, I, I have no idea how decisions are made over there, but, you know, it was uh, um, it, it's a strange episode. If you have answers, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, I don't like that uh, as a last question. Next, give me one more. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, let's see, Will from Atlanta. Will, last question. Hey, hey, Mr. Kennedy, I think you're going to win, and I'm a boomer. Uh, you, are, you are going after some of the largest entities that exist, big pharma, big agro, big government, the CIA, the FBI. Do you think that that means that you're, you're, we elect you, right? Are you going to live? Are they going to come after you? Well, I, you know, that's not something, Will, that I worry about. I think um, there are, you know, I'm not stupid about it. So I have, you know, the, the government, the White House has denied me the Secret Service protection. But I do take precautions, and I have a very good security firm, uh, Gavin DeBecker Associates, that is doing my security right now. So I'm not, like, stupid about it, but it's not something that preoccupies me. I, um, you know, I was raised in a family where 
we were taught that they're number one there's a lot worse things than dying and one of those things is living like a slave or having your our children lose all the freedoms that so many generations of americans died to give us and to protect during the revolutionary war that was a whole generation of americans that put their lives on the on the line their fortunes their property their salaries their their reputations their contacts on a line to purchase us these freedoms and many of them died during the civil war 659,000 americans died to keep these freedoms and we have to be willing our generation to make sacrifices to make sure that we don't lose them you know and we've seen attacks unprecedented attacks on our freedom of speech on our freedom of worship on all of the the amendments the, of the constitution over the past three years they're unprecedented and it's important for everybody to stand up and say we're not going to do this we're going to even if it, 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 it there's some risks involved reputational risks salary risks we need to we need to make sacrifices for our country uh, robert f kennedy jr uh, as i've said all along for the duration of your campaign you have a platform here that make the case i've made the same offer to former president trump i've made the same offer to president biden uh, i can only give the invitations i can't make people accept them thank you for accepting it we'll speak again Thanks. Enjoyed it as always, Chris. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. Happy Easter. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.